All right, so welcome to today's training. It's one of the most important courses, at least I think so, in uh, our system here. And uh, we're bringing you a master today. It's a big one. So uh, one of our goals when we put together this course was to bring people together that really have done well in this business and succeeded at a high level. Um, because at the end of the day, modeling is one of the best things that you can do and one of the quickest ways to achieve success. If you can model people that are you know, actually doing well in this business, it's just gonna help you, you know, really catapult and scale your business at the end of the day. So take notes on this course um, because uh, what you're going to be learning today from my man Dan Zatofsky is how to raise a million dollars in private money in just 90 days. Now I think Dan's gonna tell you it's not easy. You're gonna have to do some work, okay? Um, but here's somebody that's done it again and again and again, and he's going to break it down for you very simply and succinctly how you need to do it. But you're going to have to be the ones that go out and actually do the networking, go to events, shake hands, kiss babies, all the things that you need to do uh, to get people to you know want to lend you money to to fund their project. So um, let me tell you a little bit why my friend here is an authority on this subject. Okay. This isn't just somebody that I met on the street. Um, I've met Dan at many, many of note events. Uh, he's a, a very, very good public speaker uh, at most of these events and educating. Uh, and he's somebody I really wanted to work with uh, immediately just because he does what he says he will do. He likes to give back and teach people in the community on how they can you know, grow their own business. And he's got the great experience. I mean, he's done what, over a thousand deals in real estate. Um, you know, whether it's ranging from wholesaling to fix and flips, uh, performing, non-performing notes, uh, turnkey rentals, anything I'm missing there? You pretty much said it all, lending, turnkey rentals, fix flips, all right. commercial land, stuff like that. Great. And he's, he's done over 70 million in uh, funding for private money. Uh, and he owns his own capital management group, Zatofsky Capital Management. So. Uh, he knows what the hell he's doing. So this is a great guy to, uh, to learn from. So I'm going to let him do what he does best and break it down for you. And uh, the floor is yours, my friend. All right, Ben. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome all to this course. And uh, I'm blessed to be able to be here and teaching somebody like this. I'm going to come to this side. And we're going to be talking about raising money, raising private money, and how we teach how to raise a million dollars or more in 90 days or less, which really is not that hard. It sounds like it might be hard. But once you put your processes in place, uh, you'll, you'll see that there's more money than you know what to do with sitting on the sidelines. I think the number these days, I was just speaking at a, um, an IRA, self-directed IRA company. I think they mentioned it was $6 trillion sitting on the sidelines right now in IRA money. So there's a lot of money out there. People are scared of markets. They don't know where to invest. They're starting to take note of the industry and they're starting to say, hey, I wanna take control of my money. I don't wanna leave it in a bank. I don't want a financial planner, you know, putting my money out there and, uh, you know, making huge commissions on whatever they choose to put their money into. And uh, I want to control my retirement. People are starting to get a little bit more aware of their money and what they should be doing. And, and you know, with social networking now and all these events now, everyone understands, hey, I can put my money in real estate, but I don't want to fix these properties. I don't want to deal with inspectors. I don't want to deal with property, ma uh, property managers, realtors appraisers, um, permitting, contractors, finding the deal, marketing for those deals. There's a lot they don't want to deal with. So if you become that expert, if you become that go-to person, guy or gal out there that's professional and that shows that they did their homework and their due diligence, you too are not going to have a problem raising well more than a million dollars in 90 days or less. My biggest problem seems to be sometimes I have more money I know what to do with coming into us because once you do a good job for your investor, lender, they're gonna always want to give you that money. And the worst call you're gonna the worst call they ever get from you, believe it or not, is hey Mr. And Mrs. Lender, I the deal is done, I have to pay you back. Okay? Um, it's great when you have that problem. That's the biggest problem you should have. So I'm gonna break this course down a little bit on what I like to see um, and what I've done in the past on how I've raised money myself. And this is outside of going to a bank or outside of going to a hard money lender like ourselves um, because we, we base it a little differently. But if you want to raise your own money, go to an event, speak to your friends, family, friends of friends, people you know, you're in a circle. This is how you do it and this is how you do it professionally. So let's start off with the first thing you need to do. First thing you really need to do when you want to raise money is you need to put together your resume. 
your portfolio. Now, not a resume that you're going to go get a job. You need to say, okay, my name is Dan Zatowski. I'm in the business 29 years. I own Zatowski Capital Management. I've done over a thousand deals. Some of them are fix and flip. Some are rentals. Some are land deals. Some are multifamily deals. We bought and sold a couple hotels. We do seller financing to investors. Okay. And we also sell our properties to investors um, who buy them cash. So and we give them a glimpse of a couple of the deals we've done. Hey, Mr. Investor, these are so many deals we've done. And we put together like a little bio of ourselves. It's usually about a five, six page bio about who we are, what we do. So those are the type of deals we are, we do. Um, these are the numbers we look at. Okay. Very important in that you want to get, you know, some of the deals in your bio, actually, let me use a different color here. Just so in your bio, you want to have things like, okay, who you are. My handwriting is not the best, believe me. Who am I? I'm writing this as third party. Who am I? Okay? And we kind of explained that already. But you say who you are. Why should they give you money? What makes you the authority with their money? And you got to remember, you're new now. Okay, so how are you going to protect that money? You got to remember that. So who you are, what deals you have. So um, if you're a fix and flipper, okay? Hey, I'm buying fix and flips in the Philadelphia market. I'm looking to buy properties in a class B neighborhood, you know? So you want to talk about neighborhood. You know, why is that neighborhood good? Why is that beneficial for them? Uh, they, they rank properties class A being your best, class D being your absolute worst. They all make money. But why is that your niche? You don't want to say, hey, Mr. Investor, I buy in a class A neighborhood. But then I'm also going to buy a class D neighborhood, and I'm going to buy in a B and a C, and I'm going to buy a multifamily, and then I'm going to do a rental. You want to kind of have feet focused, laser focused, especially when you first start. Pick a niche and do that, okay? So uh, values, okay, and team. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this real quickly. When you talk about values, okay, this is the value. So these are the properties I like to do. This is the neighborhoods I like to do. I like properties with an ARV, which is an after repair value of $250,000 or not. I like to be all in on a property, including my rehab, at about 65 to 70%. If that's your number. In different markets, you could be at 90% and still make a ton of money. You know, if you're in these expensive markets where properties are two or $3 million and you're sitting on a 10% profit margin, you're sitting on two to $300,000. So remember, it's all about the cash. Okay, so you're talking about neighborhoods, you're talking about values. Who is your team? Real important for me when somebody comes to me and says, hey, Dan, can you, can you invest in our project? Who's your team? Am I investing in you? You've never done a business a day in your life. Nope, you know what? I partnered up with Dan Zatowski. He's gonna joint venture with me on this deal. He's got all this 29 years experience. He's done a th over a thousand deals. And here's his contractors. He uses A, B, and C contractor. They've done 40 deals for him, 20 deals for him, 10 deals for him. Here's the scope of work on some of his deals. Here's how we protect your money. We use a draw schedule. We only pay a contractor after the fact, not before the fact. So we're always ahead of the game. So unfortunately, when a contractor runs away with your money, which a lot of them do, well, then we have the money to fix the project. So we're going to protect your money, Mr. Investor. Does that sound cool? They love that. Okay, that's, that's the biggest thing. Who's your team? Who's your realtor? Where are you getting these comps from? Don't go on Zillow. It's great to look on there for yourself. Don't go on Redfin. Don't go on Trulia as your comps. Okay, but really get realtor comps. And what you want to do is you want to show your investor that you pulled at least three likewise comps, okay, that are sold within the last six months, okay, within a half mile radius, unless you're in a city. If you're in a city, it's going to be a little different because it could be a tenth of a mile radius. It's block to block in certain cities, as you know. Okay, so be really sure of your comps and be very conservative because if I, you're coming to me, I'm going to look it up. And I might even pull it, put a call into somebody I know in that market and say, hey, how's this street? Because a lot of times it's street to street. So make sure you know your comps. Let them know. this. Don't just say, I have a realtor. Say my realtor is Joe Smith from Remax Realty. He has 25 years experience doing these type of properties. He's an expert in this market on these type of properties. Not, hey, my sister Julie is a realtor and she's going to sell this property so we can save on commission. Doesn't work. Because if she doesn't sell the property, now you have to hire somebody else. Always worst case scenario. Okay, so we talked about your contractors. We talked about your realtors. 
Okay, so you're building your team now. Okay, if, they, if you need any kind of inspections on this property, if you need to have permits pulled, discuss that. Hey, I'm going to go up another story. I'm going to do a three story row home here in the city of, you know, in Baltimore City somewhere. Talk about that. Okay, give them a plan. So put that all in there. And then discuss your exit strategies. Is there a strategy to keep this as a rental? Is it to keep it as a flip? Don't say I don't know. And then give them a baseline. So when you do that, okay, you want to give a baseline. And this is real important of deal breakdown. Get yourself a spreadsheet. There's a million of them out there for free if you don't have one. A million of them out there. I see them every day on email. Everyone's giving them out. Ask somebody on Facebook and one of these deal groups, hey, who has a spreadsheet they can share with me? Somebody will be more than happy to share a spreadsheet with you. A deal breakdown. And that deal breakdown better show the purchase price, the rehab, the acquisition cost on closing, soft, co soft cost, you know, your utilities every month that you have to pay while you keep that property. Okay, cost of money. This is the one thing people don't ever count is cost of money. Make sure you have cost of money in there. So kind of figure out from your private lender or understand what private lenders are getting these days on their money. What are you going to offer? And when you're new in the business, you might need to offer 10 to 15 percent. As you start getting experienced, and we have some lenders that they're happy with six percent simple interest from us because we've done so many deals, they don't want to take a chance on somebody else. They're like, just give me, I'm happy six, seven percent, take my. I know you're going to protect our money, okay? One thing I'm going to tell you too, sorry about that, don't ever, 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 I said it again, don't ever, ever, ever guarantee anything to any investor, ever. The only thing you guarantee is you're going to do your due diligence and you're going to mitigate that risk as best you possibly can. If you guarantee, and I see it all the time, if you guarantee anyone anything, you're going to have a problem, okay? And it's not a problem now because the market's okay. But I saw people in 2007 through 2010 having big issues and they couldn't, they couldn't take care of their investors the right way. Okay, so don't ever guarantee anything. And they'll ask you all the time, so how much can you guarantee me I'm gonna make? And say, listen, I'm gonna pay you back 10% on your money, simple interest. Okay, I'm gonna either pay you back monthly, I'll pay you back quarterly, I'll pay you back at the end of the deal. How do you, what's best for you? Okay, but they say, if you guarantee that, say I can't guarantee anything, in fact, when you give them their mortgage, you know, we're going to sp speak a little bit about the paperwork you're going to give them. On there in bold writing, it's going to say that you're not guaranteeing anything. They could lose their money. They should do your due diligence. Don't trust you. This is a high-risk deal. When you look at it, you're going to be like, oh, my Lord, what am, I, what am I giving to my investors? But believe me, my attorney told me the same thing. He said, believe me, you'll appreciate it. God forbid something ever happens. And knock on wood, we've never lost a dollar for an investor. Uh, we've lost our own money, but never an investor. Okay, so basically your deal breakdown. And then you want to have, I got on a tangent, but in your deal breakdown, besides cost of money, you want to have, I said, all your carrying cost, cost of money, the, you know, interest rate, closing cost, points, whatever it might be, then the sale of your property. Always estimate, depending on the market you're in, a lot of people forget, and I see it all the time, these lower end first time home buying programs, there's something out there called, you know, seller's concession. And on every one of our deals, it seems like everybody asks for sellers concession. Now, do you give it? Do you don't give it? That's up to you. Put it in there. Worst case scenario, you don't give it. It's a bonus. Always do your deal breakdown. Worst case scenario, under promise and over deliver. It'll set you your business straight. Okay. So give that deal breakdown. So they're gonna say, okay, I'm into this deal. I'm into this whole deal, right? For a hundred thousand dollars. You bought the property for. $60,000, it's $30,000 in rehab, and $10,000 in miscellaneous costs to make it easy. The ARV on this property, okay, is $200,000. Okay? So now, Mr. and Mr. Investor, what I'm asking you is if you, could, if you would lend me $100,000, because I'm going to buy this property, I'm going to fix it up, and I showed you how I'm going to fix it up. I showed you what everything we're going to do, and I'm going to... Within six months or a year, whatever you decide, try not to go over a year. Most people are happy six months. I'm going to sell this property for $200,000. Okay? That's how I'm protecting your money. Okay? I personally, when I, when I borrowed private money, I tried to stay, I, when I first started, I tried to stay at about 58 to 60% max on the after repair value. 
for all private money. I always want to make sure I'm very conservative. I always want to make sure if the market tanked, I'm still going to protect my lender. My lender comes first. Okay, and if you treat your lender that they come first, they get paid first, before you make a dollar, you'll always be okay. So that's the baseline of the deal breakdown. And you kind of, in your bio, you kind of want to put that. That's very important to put in the bio. And that's the first part of your bio slash resume. Okay, and then next part we're going to go into is, we're going to discuss is how to market to people with private money. Let's take a quick break. Yeah. How long was that? About 15 minutes. All right, yeah, I know it's getting a little long. No, it's good. What's that? Anything I, uh, you, you want me to go back and, I'm not going to go back to that section, but I could reintroduce it in the next section for you. Uh, no, well, I've got, I've just basically been Keep jotting asking. down some notes. Keep asking questions, questions yeah. yeah. So that we'll go back to. Here we go. I just want to break it down so we can do it. Like, I like to keep it under 10 minutes each. I could. This one, because I know people, there would, I don't know this, but these big studies that yeah. people, eight to 10 minutes is the max. Eight minutes is really your max. You kind yeah. of want to be at. So. Short attention spans we got these days. It is. It is. <laughs> but they'll spend a ton of money on it. Yeah. Okay. So well, next we're going to talk about the marketing stuff. All right, cool. I know what I'm going to say about this. It's funny because when I did this one, this was like a 35 minute one that I cut it down. Yeah. Because I was going through all my presentations. Because I do a PowerPoint presentation, I went through PowerPoint with them. But I'm not going through that now. I'll just talk about it. All right, cool. Ready? Action. <clears throat> all right, guys. Well, we last, last section we talked about how to build your portfolio and resume um, to make yourself look very professional when talking to a private lender. Okay, now we're going to talk about how do you market to, private, to people with private money? Okay, very important to market the right way. And you gotta follow guidelines, okay? You can't, you gotta make sure that you're not out there publicly, you know, promising money on Facebook and social networking. There are SEC regulations you gotta follow. There's crowdfunding regulations, there's the job act. You really need to speak to an attorney about this stuff to make sure you're in compliance. And I'm sure that when you first start out, you're not, you're not forming a PPM, a 506 Reg D, um, to do this, or a CF, a crowdfunding Reg D. Um, you, I'm, I'm sure you're not doing that up front, so your probably best bet in the beginning is make sure you have a relationship with the people you work with, okay? And I'm going to give you the, this kind of overview of what I was told by my attorney. Well, I also have an attorney on this, and you should too. I'm not an attorney. And here's my disclaimer. I'm not an attorney and I'm an accountant, but you need to check with one to make sure you're in proper compliance with the SEC regulations, job, job and crowdfunding regulations, and tax regulations. But anyway, when you put this out there, don't just say, hey, Facebook, I have a deal. I'll give you 10% if anyone invests with me. I see it all the time, and that's why I'm saying it. People with experience do it all the time. And every once in a while, you have the SEC police comes out there, and boom, 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 they get you. Okay, now they're not going to lock you up and put you in jail right away. What they're going to do is they're going to bring you in their office and probably going to hit you with a heavy fine. And even if they don't, you're going to have to pay an attorney to come into their office. And I say that because we had it happen. Um, I told one of my students in the past not to do this. They said that their uh, partner's father-in-law was an attorney and they're okay. And literally within three weeks, they got the SEC letter. Just don't do it. You don't want to raise money from people you don't know anyway. In fact, I think we have, a, I don't know if you saw, we had a cartoon out a couple of weeks ago on, on joint venture partners where people raise money from. We turn more people down than we take. Okay, and you're going to be the same way. In the beginning, you might want that money so bad that you'll take anybody. But understand that you don't want to take people that are unrealistic. They want unrealistic expectations of returns. What that happened, what, then why that's a problem is because even though you might make those returns for them at some point, you don't want to go into a deal, a high risk deal that, that could reward you a higher amount of money with somebody else's money. Because if you lose that money for them, it's always, it's always okay until it's not okay. And you don't want to be in that situation. You always want to take care of your private lenders and make sure that their money is protected so that money is always available for you. And that's why we have the ability to raise that money at six, seven, eight percent all day long, okay? Because we've done a good job for them. But anyway, when you market those people, like Ben had mentioned in the beginning, um, I actually don't even remember. If we, I know we talked about it, but um, you're you're marketing to people you know in your industry, okay? So your your immediate you know group is 
you know, everyone talks about, you've all heard this multi-level marketing thing, right? Friends and family, always hit your friends and family up, but you're not hitting them up. What you're doing, you're starting, put, put together a list, you know, and it, you could start off small if you want. Uh, you could use active campaign, you could use MailChimp. Um, in the beginning, it's, it's free. I think up to like a thousand names, I don't remember the number, so don't hold me to that. Get yourself an email marketing system, whether it be MailChimp, active campaign. Those are the ones you really kind of want to start with in the beginning because they are cheap. Okay, start adding your names to those lists. You know, anyone you know, put it on those lists, put it in the list. Okay, if you have LinkedIn, you can go to LinkedIn, you can actually download all your contacts in LinkedIn and upload them to, to MailChimp, Active Campaign, any of those type of companies. Okay, so basically get your email list together. And, and believe it or not, when I sit with a student, they're like, I really don't know anybody. When we're done, we're usually at least 800 to 1,000, 1,500 names always because they don't realize who they know. Now, it doesn't have to be someone, if you think, I'm telling you this, the person you think has no money has the most money for you. It happens every time. My best investor is still somebody I had no idea who had money, has nothing to do with real estate. Your best investors are gonna come from outside the real estate investing world, okay? Everyone in the real estate investing world wants top dollar because they're active investors. The people that are passive, people that are working good jobs, People that have big IRAs, 401ks, Coverdells, health savings accounts that don't know what to do with their money, that want to retire one day, or they want their husband and wife to stop working or pay for their kids' college and get, get education, those are your best investors, okay? So don't ever discount anyone, just put everybody's name down. So you put them on a spreadsheet, get their first name, last name, phone number, email address, upload it to MailChimp or Active Campaign. Those are the two I, re I really like Active Campaign even better than MailChimp. But you start there, it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, and then what you want to do is that you can even go out there and you can buy a list. You could, you could talk to a title company. Okay, so first thing you want to do is set up email. I'll put it here, just in case you're taking notes. Set up email. So MailChimp or Active Campaign is the two I like. Okay, Three to, for like a thousand names, I think. I don't remember the exact number. Okay, then two is you want to set up you want to set up, uh, you can buy a list. You buy a list. This is going to cost a little bit of money. So there's list companies out there. You can go online and look for list companies. And you want lists for anyone with um, IRAs, 401ks, Coverdale, which is like a student kitty plan, health savings accounts, okay, cash. Cash buyers, and these are all public records, just so you know, okay? So you could also, the other thing you could do is you can go to your local courthouse. I remember at the beginning, it, you know, Ben said it's not gonna be so easy all the time, you might have to do the work. Get down to the courthouse, public records. You can pull title. If you don't have a title company, I'll do this for you. You can pull title and see who's on the mortgage. Who's on mortgage. And when I say that, on your mortgage, it'll say Counter Plan, Self Directed IRA, FBO, Dan Zatowski, IRA number, boom, 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 boom. Uh, the Entrust Group, FBO, Dan Zatowski, IRA number, boom, boom. That means I use my IRA to fund that deal. It's public record. So there's a list company that pull it, or you can pull it yourself, or you can hire a virtual assistant to go in and pull those public records for you. So go to your local directory where you live. That's probably where you should start because we're going to talk about how to take that and turn it into money. Go to your local director, your local county. I'm in Delaware, Newcastle County. I can go to NewcastleNCCDE.org and I can pull up any house I want and I can pull up any borrower I want, any lender I want. And I can pull up anyone with, I can have a virtual assistant, just show them how to do that. Pull up anyone with a self directed IRA, a solo 401k, cash, you know, investors and I can market to them. So that's your marketing list. Add that to your list. Throw it into, throw it into your email marketing list, okay? So now you have a list. You're gonna have a pretty robust list. Believe it or not, I have over 40,000 names, and people, I take people off there all the time, over 40,000, and I don't even try anymore, okay? So it's a pretty robust list. In the beginning, the first list you pull from LinkedIn, because you can, up, like I said, you can download it and then upload it, okay? Um, I should probably do a video on how to even do that. That was taught to me by somebody too. Uh, it's pretty cool, but um, in the beginning you're gonna send out emails to people that don't even, 
They don't even come true to your matter. But your, your, your real niche is in your backyard. So being wherever you live, whether it's in you know, Philadelphia, New York City, Chicago, wherever it is, pull your counties first. Start there. And like I said, if you want to pay list companies, they have them. That's easier if you have the money to do it. But if you want to do it yourself, do the sweat equity and get those lists. Okay? And then you're going to actually you know, start marketing to those people. And what are you going to market? You're not going to ask for money. Okay? What you're going to do, this should be your goal, and you're going to set up your goal, okay? Your goal should be, hey, I'm going to, go, going to have meetings with 8 to 10 people in a room, and I'm going to do a 15-minute power, PowerPoint presentation about my, who I am. Remember, we talked about a portfolio and a resume. What I'm looking to do, how I protect their money, how they're going to make money, and, and, and what part of the deal they can be part of, how they can be a passive investor. Okay, so with that, with the marketing piece, that's what you're thinking all the time. Okay, so what we put together, and what you need to put together, is a PowerPoint presentation. And in that PowerPoint presentation, this is besides your portfolio and resume, this is a, a 10, 15 minute PowerPoint presentation that you're gonna do at your meetings. Okay, when you do a meeting together. So you're gonna do a get together, you're gonna invite them in, and you can do that either by email marketing, a physical letter, an actual phone call, pick up a phone call, and say, hey dad, this is what I'm doing now. I would love you to come and you know, bring one or two of your buddies, golf buddies, and come see what I'm doing now with my business. I would love your support and feedback. We're gonna be doing it in such and such a coffee shop, such and such a hotel room, such and such a restaurant, and it's gonna be you know, an hour or two, and you know, there's no obligations, I just want you to see, you to see what I'm doing. Great. So you put this PowerPoint presentation together. If you can't do it yourself, pay somebody, go to Fiverr. They'll do it for you for like $20, $40, something like that, a real nice PowerPoint presentation. You give them all the material. They'll make graphics, make it look pretty. They've done these before. And just put some in the PowerPoint presentation, put exactly what we spoke about. These are the type of deals I'm doing. This is my team. This is how I'm gonna make money. This is how I'm gonna make you money. And this, most importantly, this is how I'm protecting you. And we're gonna talk about some of the paperwork you're gonna to use to protect your lenders, okay? So think along those lines, that's a great step to how you're gonna market, okay? So now we have your, your, your resume and your portfolio. We have how you, you know, geez, I just came up with probably a few thousand names for you easily if you do the work, easily in your market. Without a doubt, within a couple of days, you could have a few thousand names. I guarantee any market, you pull it up, just do a search for self-directed IRA, solo 401k. You know, if you know title companies, even better, sit down with a title agent, take them to lunch, see if you can work something out where you can get a list of names. Because this is, they're not giving you pub, private information, it's all public. If you go to the courthouse, you can get this. If, you're a, if your stuff is online, if the courthouse, court records are online, you can pull them off online. But there's a lot of time that goes into that. So if you have the time to do it, great, if not, you might want to pay a virtual assistant to do this, but you do it first so you can put together a course and show the virtual assistant how to get that done for you. But that's easily a few thousand names just in your current market. Now, if you're in a big metro area, it's going to be tens of thousands of names. Okay? So you'll, you'll have marketing forever set up. So that's how we do our marketing to people with private money. And you want to really earmark. Look online. Find all the self-directed IRA companies out there. Find, you know, solo 401ks. Understand Coverdells, understand health savings account, okay? Understand how these work because if you can teach people who have, you know, either left their job or retired, how to, they don't know, and I'll tell you this, nobody that leaves their jobs and has a 401k or, self or an IRA knows that they can move that. And I'll tell you this because every single time I speak to somebody, I have to actually get on the phone and help them transfer their account over to a self-directed IRA company. I can't make a decision who to use, so I give them two or three companies, and when they're ready, if they need help, I can help them move that money over. So they don't know the rules and regulations. So really learn the rules and regulations of self-directed IRAs, solo 401ks, covered Dell accounts for the kids, and health savings accounts. And learn the benefits, learn tax advantages. You know, I read the tax code. Tax code is made, believe it or not, 95% of it is made for our benefit. Understand it. Understand that you could pay, people could pay their kids and their kids can invest in real estate. Understand that because you become the expert now. You're not just asking for money. And the one thing I'll tell you is don't ever ask for money. I've never asked for money on a deal. And we'll talk a little bit about that 
when we have our, you know, talk about our event and how we protect our investors. Okay, so next, next step we're gonna get on when we come back is we're gonna come back with some of the paperwork and the legal docs that you really need to protect your lender with. Awesome. That was good? Yeah. All right, cool. It's so funny, like it's, it's, it's so different talking without in front of me. <laughs> I'm getting used to this now. But um, when I did that online training series for four days, yeah. it's the hardest thing I ever did in my life. But she's like talking to a wall, like at least mm -hmm. I've like I was literally looking at a white wall, yeah. And I'm trying to talk and be enthusiastic, yeah. And at the end, you're so I don't know if you this happens to you, but I'll watch the video and I'll be super self critical mm -hmm. and it won't be perfect. I'll mm -hmm. have I might have to do it, you know, 10 15 times, yeah. To well, like, all right, that, that one I was that one was tough because I was sick as a dog. I think I, did I tell you that. Uh -uh. I don't, I don't, and I don't want to jinx myself, I don't really don't get sick. Um, I have I wasn't sick for like uh, usually once a year I'll get like a sinus infection or something. I wasn't sick for like two and a half years. A day before I went to San Antonio, I got sick. No. And I, my wife's like, and I was like deadly sick. Like I couldn't even get out of bed. My head was like a hundred pounds. And my wife's like, just, just don't go. And I'm like, I got like you're here by yourself. That was a production. Like there was yeah. four guys there. Yeah. You know, it was three cameras. There was lights, and it was in a hotel, but there was three guys with cameras and. Um, they would get different angles, and um, I was like, I can't. And man, it was funny because I would speak, and they, I would do it, and they would cut it down to an hour. Like, I would speak for an hour, they cut it down to like 10, 30 yeah. minutes. And then afterwards, they would be doing whatever they're doing. Like, they would take those videos right away and do something with them. And I would sit there, and, and I would like just sit there, right? And it was like half hour, 20 minutes, half hour, I'd sit there between the next take, and my throat would start closing. Oh. And like, as you talk, it opened up, like yeah. it looped. But I was like, uh, and you see in the beginning, I was like, and I'm trying to like get the words out. I was like, I'm not gonna be doing this ever again. So, um, all right. So we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about paperwork now. This is the important thing. Different color here. Are we a total of 32 minutes? Well, that's now 30, but we didn't do the whole thing. For yeah, 32. Minutes. And we're doing good. So that's two segments. Figured knock out like five minutes. Cool. I just don't want it to be too long each. That's cool. It basically, it'll probably just break it down into just like a little, uh, you know, however many parts, and then we'll have a just there'll be separate videos. Right. So if they just want to watch that one that day, and then watch your. That's why I'm doing it. I'm not just randomly on. on the next I'm day. Stop it so you can break it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, ready? Set, go. Just let that stop. I don't want that to get in the background. You want me to hit decline? Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right, well, guys, welcome back. This portion of our session is going to be on the paperwork and legal docs that you're going to provide your seller. I mean, I'm sorry, your investor that's lending you money um, to protect them. Mo this is probably the, one of the most important parts of this session is protecting your lenders, okay? So you wanna tell them, Mr. and Mr. Investor, I'm doing this deal, like we talked about, it's a fix and flip, I'm gonna be out of this deal in six months, six to 12 months, this is my team, okay? These are my contractors, this is my realtor, this is my experience, you're gonna make on your money 10%, 12%, 8%, whatever you decide that they can make on their money, you're gonna tell them, you're gonna make this on your money, but most importantly, I'm gonna protect your money. I can't guarantee it, but I'm gonna protect it. How am I gonna protect it? Because you remember that house that we said, I'm gonna be all in for $100,000? So you're gonna give me $100,000 on that house? And maybe I have skin in the game, maybe I don't, which you could do that with private lending, with, with short-term hard money lenders, you're not gonna be able to do that. You always have to have some skin in the game. Even better, if you do have skin in the game, you could tell your private lender, hey, I'm putting some of my own money in this. That's how much I believe in it. That's totally up to you, okay? So, but you're gonna give them paperwork and legal docs, and you're not gonna chintz out on this. And even more importantly, if it's friends or family, you make sure you give them these legal docs, okay? Um, that's the biggest issue. And if they come down and look at you at raising money and you don't have those legal docs, you are gonna have a problem, I can guarantee you that. 
Okay, so don't ever take the easy way out and say, yeah, it's my fault, he just gave me $50,000, I'm not gonna give him anything. Nope, they either get a joint venture agreement, which means they're a partner on the deal with you, or they get a mortgage and a note, and everything else I'm gonna talk about. So, what are we gonna give them? We're gonna give them a mortgage, okay? And that mortgage will be recorded by your attorney or your title company against the property. Don't ever give them a mortgage and don't record it. Even if they say, don't worry about it, make sure you record it. You want to protect that, but you also want to protect yourself as well. If somebody comes and said, hey, you raised money illegally, you're like, no, I raised it against that property. So you're going to give them a mortgage. The mortgage says that if you default, they will actually get that house. Okay, they have a mortgage on that house. You're going to give them a note. The note spells out the terms of the deal. Okay? So it'll spell out the terms. And you're not going to have to write this up yourself. You're going to have an attorney that does this for you. Maybe he does it one time and it gives you a boilerplate and you just change things in there if you want. That's totally up to you. But have an attorney give you this. And even if somebody gives you them, well, I've given out my paperwork before. I always tell people, check with your attorney because every state's a little different. Maybe that attorney wants it differently. Even if it's a title company closing state, get a real estate attorney your first time, have them do all this paperwork for you. It's very important. It cost me for all my paperwork probably over $10,000. Make sure you get it done. Okay? So terms of deal. So to say, hey, you're getting 10% on your, you're lending me $100,000, you're getting 10% simple interest, I will start paying you on January 1st, 2018, and it'll be a 12 month note. If I extend this note, I have to pay you an extension fee of one point or two points or whatever it might be. And this is, it could be anything. This is something totally, there's no set um, system that this could be. It could be whatever you come up with, whatever you and your lender come up with. Okay, but that's what the note spells out, okay? And now what you want to give too, is you want to give a personal guarantee. Now I'll tell you why. Um, nobody wants to offer that. Okay, nobody wants to offer a personal guarantee. Okay, but let me tell you something. Everybody out there right now is Clay is raising money for deals. And if you come to me and say, hey, I'm willing to personally guarantee this, I'm pretty impressed. And you know what, you go to the top of my list when I want to give money out to because I know, hey, you're not just gonna walk away from this deal when the market turns. Especially if you have no money in the deal. If you borrowed $100,000, even if it's worth $200,000, you are gonna stay in that deal because you're gonna, you're gonna protect yourself. And why should I put up all the money and take all the risk, and then you're gonna make all that money, but you're not gonna guarantee it if something should go wrong? I'm not in this business to do flips, you are. So if you tell me you're gonna do a personal guarantee, now do you have to do it? No. Do a lot of people do it? No. But if you want to raise this money, especially in the beginning, you know, the cards aren't in your hands. The cards are in everyone else's hands right now. Okay, once you get the experience that we have, we don't ever have to give personal guarantees. Um, but you should be offering that. Okay? Now what you also offer is a confession of judgment. That means if you don't pay, your lender can get a judgment immediately on you without going through the whole rigmarole of court and everything and getting your judgment awarded. So you're almost guaranteeing them, without guaranteeing them anything, that hey, I'm willing to do a confession of judgment. And then if the property, I always used to do this too, assignment of rent. And I know Ben does a lot of seller finance with rentals and I do a lot of turnkey with rentals um, but let's say you're renting the property out and you get $900 a month and you stop paying. Well, giving me that assignment of rent makes me feel really good that, hey, you fixed up that property, you got it tenanted, you got a property managed, and you're going to give me an assignment of rent if you stop paying. So really, it's not going to take much effort for me to actually stop making my money back. Why wouldn't I give you my money? Do you see how powerful this is? Rather than saying, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, I want $100,000. This property is worth 200 grand. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to do such great, great fix up. I'm going to sell for better than anybody else on the market. Can you give me $100,000? When they come to me, they get all this. Okay? And then in certain states, certain states, certain places, and I don't even talk about this too much, but I will mention it, certain places will allow you to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure at the actual closing up front. Technically, it's a back and forth. You want to speak to your attorney about that, okay? 
So, and, and where I'm at, my attorney says, not only can you do it, but you can sign it at the date of closing. So which means if you don't pay me, they just, they just uh, record it. <clears throat> but a lot of places say, no, they can't do that. So let's talk about these five. Make sure you write them down. Mortgage, make sure it's recorded. So you want to give them a mortgage, a note, a personal guarantee, a confession of judgment, assignment of rent. So in your PowerPoint presentation, when you do a meeting, when you get to the point of how do I protect your money, your PowerPoint slide, your main slide, is probably going to be a pie chart. And your pie chart's going to have five slices in it. And you're going to talk about, you're going to have each one of these. And then in your next page, you're going to explain to them what a note is, mortgage is, what a note is, what a personal guarantee is, what a confession of judgment is, what an assignment of rent is. So Mr. and Mrs. Investor, I'm going to borrow $100,000 for you on a property worth $200,000. I'm going to give you all these to protect your money, and I'm going to pay you back 8% on your money or 10% on your money. Isn't that pretty cool? I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, if you have a meeting of 10 people in that room, at least six of them are going to be calling your phone or waiting for you after that meeting to say how did I give you their money. Okay? So this is the, probably one of the most important slides that you want to have in your PowerPoint presentation. It takes this serious. Make sure you research each one of these. Make sure in your local area you get a real estate attorney and talk to him about this. Pay them their three or four hundred dollars an hour to talk to them about this because you want to make sure that you have these all set up. And once you set up once, you can really just change the information on the mortgage and note and obviously the name and stuff like that on the other documents. But that'll make your, your investor extremely confident in, in investing their money with you over somebody else. And I'll tell you that because I get a lot of people, I probably have 30 plus people a week, email me, message me, call me and say, hey Dan, I have this deal, would you fund it? And I ask a couple of questions, they don't even have an answer for me. So they didn't do the due diligence. But if you start doing this, and it's all part of your original presentation, that's gonna make a difference in your game. And that's gonna make a difference in your business and how you raise this money. So I hope this really helps you. This is probably one of the most important parts of your PowerPoint presentation at your investor meeting. Do an invest a presentation, but I can't. Oh. Well, maybe we could do. They don't have. Like they don't have like. Uh, actually, you know, maybe we could do it on like go to meeting. Yeah, think? like a Zoom meeting or something. Yeah, let's add that to it. Okay. I'll do my pal. I'll get my PowerPoint. I might get. Yeah, I'll I'll do a PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> so you can add it in there. Because if they see us how we do it, I'll go right through the PowerPoint presentation I do. Okay. I think you can turn this off probably.